Well, this is this is cool. The first first one that we've we've got with four people. Huh. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. we can all add value. Hey guys, welcome to another podcast edition around the world. Uh, my name's Tom, I'm from Touchscreen, and today we have got China Touch, um, and there's four of us. So that's exciting, that's a milestone. Yep. So a lot of people from China are, are, are keen to get on the channel. So uh, who would like to go first and introduce themselves and tell us what your sort of, what your involvement is with China Touch and all that sort of stuff? Who wants to go first? I know Lady first. Know. <laughs> Late, ladies, first. Ladies, ladies first yeah all right uh this is alison from guangzhou and this is, would be my very first time playing in the world cup i'm so excited uh as um one of the newest player i've been only playing touch footy for about three years and a half so it's such an honor to start to play uh with this amazing team which is nice how did you get into touch football? Oh, well, it was a bunch of rugby guy came to F45 because like, I'm the marketing manager of F45 Guangzhou. So then I started to know about rugby and then they were asking, oh, do you want to play some rugby? But I was like, I would like to start with less content. <laughs> 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 and then this is how I got in. Like once I started, I'm like, oh, no contact for me. I... That not as much as they expected, but I still I start to get into touch footy to start my career. I play a little bit of content, but not that much. Of course, I am more in love with touch rugby, the touch footy more. Oh, awesome! Cool. Thank you. Who wants to go next? Which one of the boy the boys? Jordan first. Jordan first. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Big boss. I, I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hello everyone. My name is Jordan. Um, I'm uh, actually the secretary of um, China Touch Division. I'm the the Chinese Rugby and Football Association in China. So I have been the manager for the international competition for China Touch since 2014, when I was pretty young, and uh, I has also been um, involved with FIT as well. So. Currently, I'm in the FIT Coaching Commission, and uh, this will be my third World Cup, and uh, I've been to the 2015 and 2019 World Cup, and it, it was a fantastic experience. So I'm really glad that uh, this year I got a chance to play again for China. Yeah. Awesome. That's all. Awesome. So I, I guess... um. Just you being a little bit modest, uh, you are probably your involvement in China Touch is probably more than anyone else's, as far as I know. Um, I'd say you probably the what, what some people would say the bee's knees of of China Touch. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, been, I've been doing a lot of amazing stuff, and uh, but uh, but uh, I, with all the roles, I, I always enjoy um, my my role as a player best. So I always want to play. So yeah, I organize a lot of competition, but sometimes I play in the competition, which is unprofessional, but uh, I still do it because I love touch so much. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's good because like no no national team or, or, or club or anything like that would run without uh, people like yourself doing all that sort of administration job. So for everyone out there doing those those jobs, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. My pleasure. Last but not least. Yeah. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Ming Chia. I'm uh, I'm a player in the Mix Open. So Tom is my coach for the World Cup. Looking forward to that. Uh, it's me. I'm based. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm based <laughs> out in, Sh in Shanghai. I've been in China for about six years. Originally, uh, I grew up in New Zealand, so out in counties Monaco, and I, you know, playing rugby or league uh, and better touch pretty much all my life is the best way to really get to meet people and make friends and 
kind of fit in. Okay, so did you play uh, touch in New Zealand or did you start playing touch yeah, when yeah. you moved to China? Uh, so I played touch. So I played touch, proper six down touch or FIT rules um, from university onwards. Um, prior to that, I played a bit of rugby for school, like first 15 or so. I've always grown up uh, supporting the All Blacks, supporting the Warriors uh, in league. Um, and then just taking that ball sports movement uh, and into touch and then just really progressing there. And then I moved to uh, Singapore about eight years ago. So I played two years there. And then I had a friend, uh, Devin, there who was um, a great mentor to really teach me a bit more about touch and how the structure and everything. And then when I moved to China, I, I found myself quite a experienced player, say in the expat kind of community. And I developed more as a coach and a player and try to grow the, real, the sport here in Shanghai. And then that just linked up to with Jordan, the, the rest of the career in Guangzhou, where the, well, I would say the heart of touch rugby is in China at the moment. Um, and yeah, just uh, been through that whole process there. It's been great. Oh, I was, I was wondering where um, Alice went. She's come back in full kit. Yeah. <laughs> very, well, at least very, you just got home. <laughs> very, very on brand. Are you guys in... You guys in touch footy gear as well? Yeah, I got the Philippines kit, training kit. You were telling me that yeah, you were going to wear... Yeah, my clubs kit, yeah. Uh, Ming, you were telling me you were going to wear a New Zealand Warriors shirt. Yeah. I was, actually, <laughs> I was actually half tempted to put my Newcastle Knights one on. I was I was tempted to, but then I, I watched the other podcast. I'm like, oh, I should really follow suit and uh, support, <laughs> support the team. Yeah. So what the uh, big question is, what's your drink of choice that you're drinking, Ming? I saw you drinking something. Uh, I just got some root beer. Just need a bit of sugar after I run. Oh, okay. I was wondering what uh, that was. I was like, yeah, I'll expect um, some royalties from from that brand as well uh, in the coming weeks. <laughs> yeah. um, right. So uh, you, you spoke about uh, Shanghai being the yeah. heart of touch football. Oh, no. Uh, Guangzhou. Would Guangzhou. Be the heart of touch. Yeah. So, and Shanghai would be not too far behind, I'm guessing. Uh, in regards to player numbers, yes. Yeah, uh, okay. but the player dynamics be quite different. So how does touch football, or maybe Jordan, because you're um, based in, in Guangzhou, or um, do you want to talk about um, how the, the social side of touch football works where you are, and then we can talk about Shanghai as well. Um, I use the the term yeah. if I if I move to Guangzhou tomorrow and I wanted to play some touch football just casually, how how does that look, how does that look? I would say, um, so uh, you just mentioned about a comparison between uh, Guangzhou and, and Shanghai is actually um, uh, Guangzhou is kind of like catching up in the, in the last 10 years. So previously, like uh, um, in early, like about 2000s, Shanghai is definitely the number one touch city in, in China. Um, but uh, that, that base is mainly um, uh, combined with the expats uh, traveling to China. But uh, in Guangzhou, is a different scenario. Guangzhou have mostly the population like uh, of local Cantonese or, or local Chinese. So, um, in the last uh, four years, Alice is right. So during the epidemic, that uh, social touch actually, actually grows uh, during the epidemic when um, China has uh, comes out a very serious lockdown that people cannot travel. So. People are looking for options to actually do exercise. That's where um, touch rugby getting um, more popular than before. So, for example, in, in Guangzhou, so we have Wednesday night uh, social touch and uh, Saturday. So we have um, training like uh, for the more uh, more senior player, and then on Monday night we have a learn to play program, which is open to the beginners, and also. Um, in a few uh, like uh, local primary schools, middle schools, international schools, and universities, we also started to promote touch. So, so overall is in a growing trend. But uh, for social touch, obviously, um, there are only two major clubs doing social touch. Uh, one is uh, Guangzhou Rams. Um, um, the other is Guangzhou Hualong. So both clubs are uh, very active uh, in this community. And which um which yes, club do you guys belong to, Alice and Jordan? Which ones do you belong to? Guangzhou one of them Hualong. clubs. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. I spoke Guangzhou at the same Hualong. time. Guangzhou Hualong is actually um 
um, a Chinese term. So Hua means uh, China, Long means dragon. So so our club's name is actually means China dragon. So it's our club's name. It's more active now. But uh, yes, uh, we, we are a bit involved in both clubs. So I think uh, Alice originally, he she come from Rance, but uh, now he uh, she works for Hualong now. So, but uh, uh, these two clubs are work closely um, with each other. So for example, our junior, rub, junior rugby uh, program, like Alice, is uh, she's the manager, yeah. but uh, basically the, our coaching teams are uh, working together. Actually, we have um, coaches from Guangzhou Rams and coaches from Guangzhou Hualong. So yeah, it's a really good chemistry there. Yeah, that's good. So it's you more talk like about a John program. Yeah. Yeah, oh, more like okay. John program. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So you spoke about the the learn learn to play uh, program that you have. Do you do some coaching with that, Jordan? Alice, do you do some sort of? Are you involved with that sort of program? Well, for the learn yeah. to play program, I will usually be the facilitator, um, booking the pitch, um, and um doing a lot of like marketing work, promotions and um, helping people to form teams and um, assisting people and, and see whether they can grow into a more, like if they want to play in a more difficult games and um, I'm going to help them indeed. But like, I don't really do coaching too much. Before that, in the Learn to Play program, we yeah. do have a, a rugby starter program we started it for a little while and then um after the after the covid in kind of like going slow right now but we back to the trends of uh, having learn to play every monday nights and uh, touch footies on monday yeah i'm basically more like a helper helper <laughs> yeah man it's very interesting that so the facilitator. yeah so um the learn to play program actually starts with multiple Tom, your your friend Martin Poole. So actually, actually so when he was we actually spoke with Mark China. Tipple. Sorry, Jordan, we actually spoke yeah. with Mark Tipple last night. We uh, interviewed friends. Oh, really? Yeah. So yeah. Mark oh, really? actually and actually Mark uh, touched on this program. So keep going. He only didn't talk about it too much. Um, but yeah, keep going. But it's just funny you said that. Yeah, because uh, it's actually um before Martin Paul, we call it um beginner touch. Um, oh. it's mainly for beginners. Um, but uh, when Mark was here, he wanted to expand the target to people at different level. So that's when he came up with name Learn to Play, and uh, we think it's a really good uh concept. So that we adopted. So even uh, multiple in Black China, like uh, for four years or so, we still use the uh, the program and. Uh, adopted the idea so it's an interesting part <laughs> yeah and that's good yeah. and look and whilst boss the term beginner probably is true you are beginning to play no one really likes to to be labeled a beginner in anything really so i'd say learn <laughs> yeah, to play yeah. is it sounds mm -hmm. a lot more like something that a, a, a beginner would want to do <laughs> rather than just being like i'm a beginner yeah, yeah indeed yeah awesome so uh all right shanghai touch do is it the same is it different how does, um, how does how's touch in Shanghai mean? Uh, I think Shanghai and touch is a bit more slightly different where you've got, we have Thursday night runs. So that's like scrimmage or pickup. So generally that's, that's facilitated by Shanghai touch association. And uh, we do like a two hour run at a, at a stadium and we had just, you know, six aside, jump on the field. All the, we have some beginners who would learn to, to play. Generally it's more focused on say expats and, People just want to have a run. Um, on Fridays, uh, Jam Touch, which I'm uh, one uh, one of the coaches from, um, we I take the uh, we generally focus more on the, the locals who do want to learn how to play, um, but also uh, teach some of the guys who from the Thursday nights who come to the Friday to you know develop the how to play touch uh, touch structure right because. The way people come to Shanghai generally is there's a lot of expats that come. They have a rugby background or a sports background, but they may not know six down touch. So, you know, don't know what a 32 is or you say a rooster or what is a corner and shut. Um, so it's more free flowing, like back at the back uh, in the backyard playing touch on on Thursday. So we try to make things a bit more structured there. Uh, so those are two 
uh, runs that we have weekly on Thursdays, Fridays. Um, and then we have the Shanghai Touch League, which is, I guess, every two to three weeks. And it's uh, because Shanghai is quite, quite big. Um, however, finding grass fields on a weekly basis is quite hard. So we have a place called in Wagachau where we'll play three to four games in one day. And we'll rotate, we'll play that every three to four week, uh, two to three weeks, and we'll finish a whole season of, of that game. And so we run two seasons uh, per year. And then generally we have a big tournament called the SITT or Shanghai, Shanghai International Touch Tournament, which is quite a big tournament that a lot of international teams who come and come and visit. But during COVID, and it was quite difficult because a you had a lot of expats leave during that time, and it was a lot. Of, it was very hard for teams to come into the country to to play the tournament. So it's been quite hard, but now that it's been opened up in the last year or so. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's booming again, which is great. So the Shanghai touch league has now nine teams across from different rugby teams, rugby union teams, putting on a touch team. Shanghai touch association has two teams. Jam touch has one team. So, uh, looking to put in a second. So it, it is quite a uh, growing sport, which is great to see. And we have yeah. the school system like Jordan was saying as well, oh, which a lot great. of schools are happening. Awesome. Are you, do you do any work with sort of the schools or the juniors or anything, or does it? Do you have people from the Shanghai yeah. Touch helping out? Uh, so Jam Touch. Um, so the um, the leaders of Jam Touch generally they go out to the schools. Um, they'll teach during their PE sessions, learning how to play touch, and then they'll put into the um, tournaments every two, three or three or four months or so, under ten. Uh, sorry, under six, under eight, under tens, etc. We've got a tournament actually tomorrow, which would be um, uh, which would be good. Um, yeah, so there's multiple schools. Ever since I would say that rugby sevens became an Olympic sport, uh, a lot, lot of interest has been going into rugby, and touch is such a great uh, great way to get you know the ball skills, the agileness, etc. That can be transferable to rugby maybe down the lines. So hoping hoping that we can get more people to really love the game there. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And um, it's amazing that the, the skills that you learn in touch football, um, mm -hmm. how, how well they go in, in rugby 15s and we have rugby league. I can only imagine how much it would help you in rugby sevens with needing mm -hmm. to throw the, throw the, the longer passes. Okay. So, um, well, that's, that's interesting. And when you talked about pickup touch, Jordan, do you have pickup touch in Guangzhou? Mm -hmm. So what do you mean by pickup touch? Tom. And this is a, this is an interesting point because up until talk, up until talking to Thailand, I had no idea what pickup touch was either, and I didn't. I, no one from the the Shanghai sort of touch league actually even said that that's what they do. So so pickup oh, touch, okay. from what I know, is I've heard of pickup basketball just because I'm watching the Michael Jordan documentary. Is basically anyone who wants to come and play, they just show up whether or not they, they pay an entry fee or something and they are just allocated teams on the night and they just play. Is that, is yeah, that how you run it? Oh, you do have that. Yeah, we do have that. Yeah, for, yeah, for that, rare starts, we do have that, yeah. yeah. What, do you, what, what do you call it? Just come play touch. I think we touch just come play touch. Yeah, we do have a name for that, yeah. Okay. The scrimmage. <laughs> well, yeah, so, for what like, I, for yeah. a, like what happens is basically on WeChat or messages, you just put your number name up and then you might get a whole list of players or, or turn up and you just turn up on a day, six aside, uh, rotate subs. And um, yeah, you get to play with someone new or you get to teach someone or you learn from someone. And it's a great way just to, you know, uh, be social. So it's just uh, quite a social run. Yeah. And we're, and we're trying to start, or well, we did last year, we started up something like that um, at our local club because we have social, uh, we have a club, where you can just enter a team with your friends. Uh, I'm in. I'm in the, the boring spuds. That's our team name, and it's just with some some guys that I'm friends <laughs> with. And and in that club, we make rep teams, and we've just introduced a um, Premier League uh, run competition over about seven weeks, um, where yeah. you know, all of our representative players are put into a draft, and you just randomly allocated either a men's or a women's team. Uh, so I could be I'm in the men's 30s. I could be up. We could have three men's 20s, a mixed open, two men's 40s, a men's 50s in the team, and it's completely random. And you just go and play each other, um, and it 
it just it just means you've got um, over 50s mingling with the under 20s, which doesn't normally happen. Yeah. So when we go out to tournaments, everyone sort of knows each other and just the culture becomes so much better. Yeah, I, I guess the difference for us is that we're not really aiming to go to like a tournament. So we're not really talking about, oh, let's run this play or try to teach someone this play. It's just more of a, hey, you go down here, I'll, I'll loop around yeah. to something it's a bit sort more. On the fly stuff. Yeah, on the fly stuff. Uh, which creates a good creativity, um, mm. but it uh, mm. it takes a while to get people to really learn the structured play of touch. Yeah, and it's it can mm. be people people say it's a simple game, but it's really only simple once you learn it properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. just like every, which is yeah. like every sport. I'm sure there's yeah. um, astrophysicists out there that say what they do is very easy because <laughs> yeah, they already uh, know I mean, it. <laughs> I mean, I've tried well, tried teaching a lot of, like, say, you expats who have never played the game before, just learning a three-man drive takes oh, weeks, yep. months. Wow. And you think it's just so simple. Um, you know, uh, there we yes, as you said, it is a, we think it's a simple game, but if you're not coming from some sort of reference point, it is quite hard. Hmm. So uh, backtracking now to, to World Cup. Um, so Jordan, you said it was your third World Cup. Ming, yeah. Alice, first World Cup. Uh, yes. first playing yes first, first playing so you've what have you done to the other one uh i went to malaysia in 2019 so my then girlfriend was playing in oh, the okay. mix open and now my wife is um can't play but now i'm eligible to play so um, yeah okay that's <laughs> yeah, good like full circle yeah. um i heard <laughs> um we, we've had a couple of people talk about the the 2019 world cup and actually the, how brutal the conditions were um jordan you probably would be more used to that than than me um because uh, from what i gather guangzhou is a lot more of that hot humid than what shanghai more gets. Humid, yeah yeah so how did you find it jordan how did you find playing in malaysia were you sort of was it okay because you thought you might have been a bit used to it or more used to it than other countries no honestly not it, it's just super hot and um yeah, so uh, a few times I've been to Malaysia and, and you know, before the 2019 World Cup, there was a uh, Youth World Cup in 2018 when I was F uh, with FIT as a volunteer. It, it just too hot, too hot for me. And um, so I never get used to that weather and that condition and the humidity and, and, the, and the temperature there <laughs> is really high. So I remember in 20. 19 so we play against fiji and uh yeah, I remember that game. the game time was cut to 30 minutes because on that day it was just too hot i can't remember the the temperature but but it's totally yeah, it's, it, was, it was in the 40 yeah. yeah it was in the 40 pluses i remember that and that game didn't yeah 45 something yeah it's really yeah. hot yeah yeah it sounds like a wuhan game again <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, my hands is drier, yeah, yeah, but mm. still very hot, yeah. Yeah, the humidity would have made a, a big difference in just you would have been covered in sweat. Yeah, uh, yeah. and yeah, the, even even just running on the sidelines, just giving <sighs> like water as so, uh, it felt like yeah. five kilo weight is just on your chest wow. of this of heat, and, you know. And the 2015 World Cup in Australia, that one was um, pretty tough conditions as well as far as the rain. <laughs> It was a, yeah, a big, a big bomb, bomb of rain that hit Australia on the East Coast pretty much right when the World Cup was. Because I remember, because I was, we were actually going to, me and a couple of friends, we were going to drive up and watch a couple of games. Um, yeah. But then it was just rain and we saw the fields and it was just muddy. <laughs> it was yeah. very yeah, muddy. Very muddy. Uh, like like yeah, a river. Died, there, yeah. Yeah. yeah Dive from the seven, right? <laughs> or five at the time. It would have been. It would have been five, and I don't even know if you would have been able to dive. You would have just slipped over. Yeah, I, I still remember. So one game, so China makes open play against Germany makes open. So we are supposed to play in, in on on a certain field, and it turned out it's all water there. So what we can do is like uh, ten minutes before the game, we just find any any fields available. So, so so we just find somewhere like slightly better and we play on that. So it was really bad. But um but uh for us it was the the first ever World Cup. So people's yeah still finding a good experience, I would say. 
Oh, the experience would have been amazing. And it's probably a, a tournament that you're never going to forget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I think if it's not World Cup, it must be cancelled, right? The event. Yeah, that's right. I've played. I've played one tournament at Coffs Harbour, that same venue where it was um, extremely yeah. muddy, and that was a, a national tournament. And they cancelled one of the days, and they shortened the games. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there's not a lot of not a lot of events that would have proceeded then. Yeah. So, so um, I think for uh, from, from 2015 World Cup, we we also cancelled a day and then shortened the game time to 20 minutes for one day or two. Yeah. So okay. I think uh, for the last day, it returned to normal. I recall. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, uh, Alice, first, well, first World <laughs> Cup, like, like myself, I've never been to a World Cup either. Um, what are you, what, yeah. are you really excited about anything? Is there something that you're just really looking forward to in particular? It could be to do with touch or could be just due to anything that's in England. You having a beer, Jordan? Like, you know what? It's, tea, my, sorry. it's gonna oh. be my second time going to. <laughs> it's gonna be my second time going to UK. So. Oh wow. Yeah. It's gonna be nice. Um. So going to the new city that I've never been to in the UK, which is good. Secondly, like going as a team, not like going there as a like tourist. It's a different story, and uh, you gotta focus on the game as well. Like, and also enjoy the city in a different way. Which is nice, and also my boyfriend is coming with me, so we are both playing in the senior, and we're coming with friends, so we're definitely gonna have some good time. This is something I'm excited about, but also um, it it's not a lot of pressure, but like still like some work to do, it's like some studies, uh, some trainings that I gotta do for myself, so I have to keep my schedule really tight mm. to prepare for it. Um, but still like hundred percent excited for it. That's that's really cool. So Alice and, and Jordan, I've got in front of me the senior mixed pools. Um, so it's got all the teams that you're playing against. Is is there any this is something I'm asking everyone, is there any team that you're really excited to play against? Have you guys seen the pools? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, thought, yeah. yeah Jordan. So you got yeah, what is it? Chile, yeah, so Cook I'm... Islands, Fiji, Ireland, Italy, New Zealand, and Scotland. Wait, wait, wait. Are we in Australia's pool A? Mix over. Uh, uh, I've got senior mix. Senior oh, oh, sorry, mix. Senior mix. Sorry. sorry. We'll, we'll get. We'll get. We'll get to yeah, you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I think uh, it, it, it's an exciting pool. I mean, a lot of uh, islander countries. So yeah, I, I think uh, I expect I will, I'll have a hard time <clears throat> defending the middle. <laughs> so a lot of stepping, a lot of good steps. So yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. Which um which team sorry was it that you were keen on playing against? Uh Fiji uh Fiji New Zealand Cook Islands. Oh yes, yeah, the islands. Yeah, the Cook Islands will be an All interesting one because um <laughs> they're actually based in Sydney, um and they're probably going to be a bit of a unknown um nation because they they come from well I'm not sure about the senior mix actually but a lot of the younger teams actually come from a Sydney based club. There's a big family. Um, that sort of really dominate uh, that club. And they're all really, really, really good touch players, but they're all really young. So I, I imagine that Cook Islands will be, all the teams will be from that region in Sydney. So they could be quite good. But yes, very steppy. Fiji, if they can get, <laughs> I tell people this, if they can get the, the, the people that worked at the hotel that I stayed at, um, when I was in Fiji, would make a great team because they were just <laughs> freaks. Just naturally gifted. Was, oh, naturally yeah. Gifted. Just fast and fit. And it's like, I want to go climb that tree. Oh, okay. I go goes and climb the tree just for fun. <laughs> but you, Alice, you keen on any any particular team or is it those teams as well? Or Well, like it's my first World Cup, so what more I can expect? Everything. <laughs> Every, everything. <laughs> Have you been have you been to any of the any of those um countries before? Uh no, not really. No. Yeah. So it's also good to see like you you know, people coming all over from the world and getting all together in one game and you got you're gonna see people's like in your similar age because you're playing in a 
that division, right? Mm -hmm. Then um, you gotta see how people react to uh the same sport and how they see things and differently. That which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So now we've got mixed open men. So you've got Australia, Ireland, Italy, Philippines, Spain, and the US. Yeah. For you, who are you, <laughs> who are you most which which games is, is most exciting? The most exciting and daunting would obviously be would be Australia. I mean, they are the world champs. Um, oh, we'll smoke them. We'll smash them. <laughs> yeah, Tom, you're our secret weapon, right? You tell us everything <laughs> that they can do. Yeah, and if we lose, it's my fault. Oh, we, we already agreed this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, as, uh, you know, growing to really love the sport, you boys and being naturally competitive, you always want to play the best and really see how you stack up. And it's not not many op uh, opportunities you get to play the best in the world. Um, you know, one day, hopefully, I get to play for New Zealand, you know, some age group down the line. But uh, unless you're in New Zealand or Japan, um, uh, you don't get that many opportunities to play the emus or even the, um, the touchbacks as well. So getting the chance to play any of those top two would be uh, would be a blessing and very lucky to be in the same pool as him. Yeah, it will be a, a fun game too. And the good thing with mm. touch is like, whilst it is probably a little bit daunting to play Australia, you, you know that it's not going to be, you're not going to not enjoy it regardless yeah. of what the score is. It's just the type of game touch footy is. You could um, play a team and get pumped, but still find enjoyment out of it. Whereas there's other yeah, sports definitely. that probably, the other sports that would probably be the worst day of your life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll definitely be exhausted by the end of it, but hopefully by the end of it and by the end of the World Cup and share, share a deal with them and just reminisce how, you know, the great opportunities that we had. Yeah, and a great definitely. Absolutely. So um, what was I going to talk about? I had a list here of things that are prompts, but I've, I'm very unorganized today, so I don't actually have it. Um, <laughs> World Cup prep. Now, obviously, I know a bit about how that is, the training and, and how, but I'll, obviously everyone here watching is not me. So do you guys want to talk about um, how the, the World Cup campaign started um, was there trials? How's the training going? And all that sort of stuff. Anyone can talk about this. Uh, yeah. Do you want to talk a bit about how we did the selections and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the context, like, um, we have players from different parts of the nation and, and China's really big. So uh, we have players from, obviously, um, Guangzhou and Shanghai. And we have players from Beijing as well. And we have players from, from Yunnan, it's like a southwest of China. So basically, we come from everywhere. So what we can do um, is we do some training camps like every one month or two. So try to um, try to get the whole team together so that we can train and improve as a team. So this situation is very um, different from, from um, Hong Kong, China, because they have all the players in one city, so they can do training twice a week, which we can't do that. But um, so, but uh, it's, it's a very interesting process, like um, especially for senior mix, like people just come and know each other for the first time. And then we went to Hong Kong, went, went to different competitions, um, play as a team. So. It's a bit culturally strange <laughs> as we do training camps, but um, yeah, on, on host it's really fun. Yeah, and um, it's interesting you talk about Hong Kong having such a, a condensed population and they yeah. can train twice a week. I was actually talking, one of my recent interviews with is Singapore, and they said from from coast, well, from end to end on their, in, in Singapore is only 42 kilometres. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. There's teams that there's there's people that I play in my social team that live further away from me than that, <laughs> and they've got yeah. their nation. Mm -hmm. So that's um that's pretty handy to be able to train twice a week for a World Cup. Not even Australia do that. They they do their um their camps as well because we have 
well, I think if you were to drive from Sydney to to Brisbane, the two major cities of touch football, it'll probably take you eleven hours, yeah. or maybe ten. Depend depends on who the driver is. It's like Shanghai, Guangzhou, kind of mm. distant. But Alice, how are you enjoying yeah. the um the, the World Cup preparation, the training? Is it has it is it on a different sort of level than what you were used to before you you started? Well, definitely, especially for those camps and, you know, like time being concentrated and you have to like pick it up very, really fast or otherwise you're going to slow down the others. Uh, so you got to be like doing your A game. You got to be like click on, switch yourself on. It's still like, it's still pretty new for me for this kind of level of training. And I also do it on my own for some weight training, like doing it on myself, um, for fitness, making sure my fitness is good for that. Especially, I'm playing the winger, so I have to do a lot of running <laughs> lately. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You never yeah. know. The senior mix have got a new coach. He might come in and say, "You know what? You can play link." I don't yeah, know. Right yeah. <laughs> for, for, for now, I'm, I'm happy with like playing, playing, playing the wing for now. Like to my knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, but it's good. Yeah. Like it doesn't really matter what position I'm playing. I'm still trying to like. Yeah. To my best self for for that. Yeah. Just whatever I think, can. Uh, yeah, interesting thing is that pulling Alice on the link might be a better idea because um her boyfriend will play link. So she will play winger. So I'm just yeah, worried <laughs> about actually, they will have a link chat on field. <laughs> <laughs> so put him put him at link so that you know, you know you know you know that they're yeah, not yeah, be must do that. They must this. do that, yeah. Yeah. See this yeah, is good separate this is them, good. yeah. This is good coaching, yeah. Jordan. You talk, you, you you're thinking about the team first, and you're not talking. You're not thinking technical touch football. You're talking about the the psychology of a human being and how you can get the best out of the team when thinking about that. That's <laughs> that's that's just good thinking. That's one of the scope. <laughs> yeah, we no. need to do that. Just yeah. I've um. So I I coached a team, a mixed team. One year, this is when I first started coaching. It was one of the first sort of senior teams I coached. It wasn't a, a, a serious team. We played, a, we got divisions at our rep tournaments and we were just sort of a low division. But there was a couple, there was a couple in the team. And then there was a brother and sister in the team. And <laughs> the brother was actually, no, sorry. Yeah, there was a couple in the team and then they, they both had a brother and a sister each. So one of them had a brother, one of them had a sister. So there was siblings connected to the um to the yeah. couple as well. Yeah. And at one stage they were all four on the field at the same time. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and the dynamic it must be difficult. The dynamic yeah. shifted. <laughs> yeah. Ming, Ming, do you want to talk about Ming, you you wanna share your story? Yeah. I, I suspect yeah. you and you and your wife played middles together. Yeah, so uh, my wife Jojo, she's uh, one of the top players in China. Uh, I would say all female players, so, but all players, she's one of the top. And um, yeah, we just had a, a, a we well, I met we met playing touch socials and um, yeah, long story short, got married, etc. But uh, we just had a baby two months ago. But that kind of puts her out of the contention to for the World Cup, which I should really apologize to the team because you know she, she wouldn't be able to play. Um, That's kind play. of your fault. Yeah, it is so you, should, my fault. you should be apologizing. Um, but she'll she'll be uh, coming along, and our baby as well. I uh, will come to um, the field. I uh, come into the World Cup as well. But like on the field, um, we're generally pretty good. Um, don't have to talk too much on the field. I kind of know. What her preferences are, what players she likes to run. Um, it's just just more making sure I get her the ball in time that she can go and does her dive or you know finds her a mismatch, and then she's a happy woman. <laughs> <laughs> See what uh, I can probably tell you something that's worse is playing with your mum <laughs> and your dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when I was younger, I was in the same team as my parents. Yeah, and um, well, yeah, very, uh, very interesting because <laughs> you couldn't well, really, so, you couldn't really talk back to them on the field. <laughs> would 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 they ever like? Would they ever like 
why didn't you do this? You've seen us run this a million times. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and uh, still didn't do it. I still remember. That actually um, happens uh, with our junior rugby uh, last sections of each season. You know, we, we have the family playing all together. And <laughs> and the kid just yelling to the parents, like, Mom, what did you just do? <laughs> I still remember. I, I still remember um, defending one time. And I'm talking, I'm probably like 12 years old playing in, in the senior division at social. And I was playing at link. Mum's playing middle. And we're defending, and all I all I, I remember is just her yelling, "Stay out, stay out, Tom!" And I'm just like <laughs> mortified to actually go in and make a touch. And that's why it took you so long to learn to shut. Yeah, that's right. Because I just hear, hear my mum's voice, just "Stay out, Tom." Yeah. <laughs> so, man, you to so we got a we got a fourth visitor, do we? Mascot. Uh, yeah. A little. There's a two actually. Oh wow! Yeah, and dog. <laughs> <laughs> how's um? So how's mixed open prep going, Meng? How are you uh, for me, finding it? For, uh, for me personally, I found it quite good. Um, being out in Shanghai, uh, is a bit more travel because we normally come down to Foshan or Guangzhou, Foshan area where majority of the team is. But um, uh, for us in Shanghai, there's like four of us up here. Uh, we're all committed for the course, so we fly down for the weekend um, once um, once a month or two two or so months. We do the big training camp. So uh, the last two we did the one day training camp, and and then we went to Hong Kong, played that tournament, which was great and a great result for us. And um, obviously having you, Tom, um, there was really uh, really um, pays and. Uh, pays dividend right so we can really, oh, yeah. really understand yeah. a a how you coach your own game but also what are your expectations and uh you know your preferences so just working with that uh last weekend uh, one day training camp then we had two games against senior mix of um, china and also hong kong china and then we had the national championship so that um that we played together so that was really good um then we have another training camp in next month and then the world cup in in july all in all i think it's been pretty good um uh, being in, in shanghai for at least i'm quite fortunate that uh we have enough players from the team that we play together in our pods in our club team and jam so when we do play like shanghai touch league we get to practice running our players together the opposition may not be as um well rigged you could say in, in certain defensive policies but it's the chemistry, it's the timing, all those things we can just work on. So um quite fortunate for that. Yeah, that's good. And you're probably um a bit uh there's a few people a bit taken back, or well, not so much taken back, but um surprised when when we started training and, and there was no 32 peels or roosters and there was no standard sweepers used yeah <laughs> everyone couldn't <laughs> re couldn't really believe it when we're like oh what do, what do you mean we're not going to run a rooster or a sweeper or a fly yeah. what, what do you what do you mean about that and that's actually the way that i've started sort of uh coaching teams back here as well is we're not running those plays that, that, that are really common as much anymore mm. Mm. it's uh, yeah the variety and i kind of look at touch uh touch rugby or touch football similar to basketball right basketball a bit more longer history but you have set plays you have set formations versus different types of defense um so like taking that as a like a, as a base and then looking like for example for we run you know whatever plays we you've taught us with the cindy's and the rhinos or whatever it's very foreign to me from a as a new zealand teacher a uh, new zealand player coming across and learning like the number system etc uh, that we had like 33 field etc but uh the plays that we uh that you, we have been learning from you have been very um uh has been great to give variety to the game so to add um surprises to the defense you know if the if you see this defense doing this we had these kind of options at least our repertoire is so much more bigger than it was maybe six months ago yeah, and I had um, it was Bryce um sent me sent me a little video yeah. from from the weekend, and he was so proud yeah. that he 
he, he did a Cindy two step and they scored off. Yeah. It. And he's like, did I do oh, it yeah. right? And I was like, you did it right. And um, that's what I've noticed with the, especially the senior mix guys there. Uh, the ones that are new to touch football are so, they're so keen that this, they ask yeah. so many questions and they just want to, they want to get themselves better players as quickly as possible. Yeah. So mm. that's awesome to see. It's, it's when it's you. That, it's the best we have. Especially say when you were we were talking about the training and the camp and uh, it's one of the blessing day that we ever had. Especially as you mentioned, the new players, uh, like everyone's are so eager to learn. Oh, sorry, some yeah. ring the bell. And I yeah, think yeah. Um, with senior mix will um will really benefit from having uh, the new coach um Mitch. Uh, come along next month as well um he's big on mm. on fitness so alice i think you'll really enjoy that <laughs> he's big on <laughs> he's big on um doing training under fatigue because he says his philosophy is you're going to be playing under fatigue so you need to train under fatigue does that mean that yeah. they're going to do a bronco the first first part of the day so um i've so we coach the same region. He coaches a different club level, uh, but we both coach Hornets. And one year I had an, um, the under 14 boys and he had the under 16 boys. And at training, we were going to have a, a full game against each other. And he goes, we'll be ready in five minutes. And I go, what do you mean five minutes? And he goes, that's how long it's going to take for him to do a Bronco. And he made him do a Bronco <laughs> before playing us. Oh. And he said, "Wow." he goes, now you don't have an excuse for being two years younger. <laughs> Because we've just done a Bronco. So it leveled the playing field a bit. I had a younger team, but he had a fatigue yeah. team. Yeah. Um, uh, it's just, um, yeah, the, uh, has a real interesting way to look at it, right? Because operating on fatigue is, um, knows, you know, if you don't have to think about it, but you can just do it, that's, that's where you want to get to, right? And there's so many good teams um, in the same situation. So the better you can operate, the better you can perform. Mm. And I don't think he'll make you do a full Bronco. I think he'll make you do a broken one. And the thing with Mitch is um, last year we had different divisions. He had 16 girls and I had 14 girls and we watched them do fitness and he was running all the fitness drills with them. So he never, he never stood there and he never, he never stood yeah. there and make him, made him do fitness. I probably would. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't like fitness. Um, he was, wow. he was, he was running the fitness drills. He was at the back. Um, the girls were really fit. But he he finished every everything he said that he he wasn't going to make them do anything that he wasn't going to do himself, which was um which was nice. Example. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lead by example. Even if you're leading from the back, you're still doing it. Yeah. Awful one. Yes, that's it. <laughs> oh, what's that? I'm really. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> what are you what? drinking? It's a can of booze. What is that? This Something is the shine. milk beer. Milk beer. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to read the label, but I can't. <laughs> the English, the link, no, English no. part literally it's says milk TV. beer. I have milk beer. Pump water. <laughs> <laughs> How much you pay for that? Um, about three dollars fifty Australian, and that's cheap. If you go to a really? movie, yeah. If you go to yeah. movie the- a movie theater and buy this, it'll be about seven dollars Australian. So what's that about? Yeah. 20, wow. 20, 21 Chinese. Yeah. The, wow. That would, that would be what sixty cents Australian. That's one thing. One China. thing. Um, one thing I've noticed is when I've been in China, I've realised actually how ridiculously expensive just common things like a cup of coffee is in Australia, or um, going <laughs> when, out to when so, you got I'm, that cup of coffee, right? Yeah. <laughs> Funny story <laughs> for another day. But Jordan was kind enough to take, I don't want to um, make you guys jealous, but Jordan took um, myself and Terrence out to a really nice um, barbecue restaurant. And he told me that it's like a um, all you can eat thing. They'll just keep bringing us food um, off this certain menu. And he told me <laughs> how much it cost. And I said, oh, that's actually quite reasonable. And then he goes, oh, and drinks are included. Like all drinks, yeah. beer, beer. Yeah, like alcohol was included, and I was just like, "What?" 
<laughs> it would be more. It would be more than that without the drinks in Australia. <laughs> and it was yeah, really nice food. Like forty Australian dollars something. So yeah, you can have the barbecue and then all the drinks as much as you can. Yep. So there's a barbecue. I actually, I actually, I, bring them. They actually like, took Peter Waters there as well. Oh, how did did he <laughs> like, Waters like yeah. it? Yeah, they like it as well. Oh yeah, yeah. It's on the barbecue as well. He likes it and stuff. Yeah. There's a barbecue yeah. near near where I live, and it's sixty five Australian dollars. No drinks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Australian it's, meats generally okay. Okay, New Zealand meats better. Just saying. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. I just don't remember the food last last time I was in New Zealand. I was only twenty. I think I was twenty or I was nineteen. Um, I can't remember. I do remember Ferg Burger. I was in oh, Queenstown, yeah, yeah, Queenstown yeah. and um, I remember it just, we were walking past there at one in the morning and it was still just no. jam, jam-packed. It, it, apparently it closes for like two hours from 4am to 6am just mm. so they can clean the shop, but it's just burgers. Um, I don't, uh, if um, the, the 2017 or 18 World Cup is in Queenstown, oh. make, sure, make sure you get a Ferg burger. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> if if you if you can't wait that long for a Ferg burger, there's Ferg Bakery next door. The pies, the meat pies there are amazing. So like the, mm. the lamb and cream pies and steak and cheese. Wow, all the, all the Kiwi classics are so good. Yeah, uh, it's it's so exciting. The 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 next World Cup in New Zealand. It did, I wish they held off though, um, making the announcement until after the England mm. World Cup because I was worried that there might be some people from like um. Uh, our, our continent, like Oceania, like the Samoa, um, Papua New Guinea, even New Zealand, that might say, "Oh, we won't go to England because it's so hard to get there, and we'll just wait for New Zealand." But it seems like the amount of teams is pretty pretty healthy. Mm. It's just very hard yeah, to I get mean, to England from where we are. Yeah, I mean, it's at least two flights. Yeah, and double digits. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, th- I'm, I'm, I actually think um, because one of my trips to China was my first trip to China, actually, that um, there was a group of people on the flight that were actually going to England and the, yeah. the flight just so happened to be a connecting flight. So mm-hmm. it's pretty common to actually go from Australia to Guangzhou and from Guangzhou to London or to wherever they were going in England. I just assumed it was London. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a direct flight from Shanghai to, to London, unfortunately. Yeah, that's that's good. I'm gonna take from Guangzhou to London. I'm not so sure. Mm. Because last yeah, time I went one. there, I was I flew from Toronto. Yeah, there's a direct flight from for Guangzhou to London as well. But just about every day. Yeah. Twelve hours and forty minutes. But I I it's worth we're lucky that you know it's a direct flight for one direct flight for us you know, in China, but I guess it's the difficulty is really like the visa situation for Chinese nationals. So um, hopefully it yeah. all works out fine. And I think that's what's kind of holding China back just a little bit that we can't do as many tours, et cetera. Um, mm. But when we can, we, we go and we play and we make the most of it. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think um, Jordan, you've been doing a lot of work with um, sponsorship for some of our players that, um, our players that are students. Yeah, I don't know if you want to you want to mention that because I think it's a really good thing that you've done. Uh yes. Um, we, we try to because um, China Touch is similar to other NTOs. Most of the NTOs that we are our players are self funded, but for uh, some some players like uh, they're they're students, they're young and they they don't have a job yet, so that um. We try to uh, support them financially. So what what they can do is that they do some uh, uh, some uh, uh, coaching work for the local schools, uh, for our junior rugby program, and also for uh, social media uh, promotion. And also they will help us uh, on the fundraising, or for example, selling the playing kits of the China Touch, all sorts of things. So we aim to get the the as many young players as possible because we we see as Tommy I already noticed that our team's not really young. For for mixed open, I mean some 
I think uh, we got half the teams like uh, over 30 years old. So yeah, yeah. so we really look at, um, uh, we really look to build the future of China Touch. So after the World Cup. So yeah, it's tough, but on the whole, on the whole so it's working really well. I think the, the young players are doing a lot for the community. They are, they are coaching the kids really well. So yeah, really help like um, grow the sports here in, in China. Yeah, and they're more than happy to pick up the uh, the coaching staff from the airport as well and and show them how to <laughs> and show them how to catch a subway that I that I'd never done before. <laughs> Best time, yeah. <laughs> It's like, yeah. oh, we're gonna catch we're gonna catch a train and the trains that I'm used to, I think I put a photo up of the train station that's in my town and it looks very different to the one that I caught in Guangzhou yeah. airport. Yeah. <laughs> our, our, our trains have got um two carriages. <laughs> oh. Two carriages and um they don't go for anywhere. Oh, we do have the the long train trips, but I've I'd never been on a train for that long before and standing up the whole time and and it was just shoulder to shoulder. Um, I'd never experienced that before. Um, yeah, I think sometimes yeah. it was Lillian who picked you up at the airport, right, Tom? Yeah, Lillian or Max? It must be one Matt, of them. It was Max the first time, and then Joseph the second time. All right. Because we were having yeah. problems. I was uh, stuck at the airport because I couldn't get my phone working. I couldn't get the Wi-Fi working at the airport. And I was having trouble uh. getting my transit visa. And I had no way of telling Max that I'm here. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> and, and poor Max was waiting just at the at the gate where I come out for probably two hours. <laughs> And probably with no com- with no communication, probably going where where is this guy? Does he even exist? <laughs> <laughs> but it is interesting. She's, I think she's very um, diligent, yeah. Yeah, and when you said that the the mixed open team is a, a bit older, a, a few of them actually asked. I think it might have been um, Andrew that that actually mentioned, "Do we play senior mixed mm. uh, and try and go better um, than playing mixed in, in a harder division?" And I think, in my opinion, they've made the right decision staying in mixed open. Um, I think it's a a premier division. It's um, going to get a lot more traction for China. Um, you'll be publicised a lot more. You'll probably get more chance of being um, televised or streamed and um, promoted on the, on the social media. So I'm glad that they're playing mixed open still. And it allows us to have two teams. If they probably all went, we're going to go to senior mixed, I don't know if we would have been able to... St- Still field field another team, so I think that was good. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think it's a, a great decision. Um, like I guess for us older ones, um, to go play if we have capable and select by and mix open, um, just go for it. Um, mm. You don't get that many chances, and we all get older, right? The uh, father time is undefeated, so <laughs> that's let's, right. Let's make the most of it. How'd you feel having a coach that was younger than you? <laughs> Did you know I that to... I was young? Did you know that? I, I, I got a feeling no, not many people knew that I was younger. Even though I don't feel younger. Older, the fact the fact that I'm older than you, but still taking your orders, shows how 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 well respectful I am, or how stern <laughs> I am. <laughs> but um, no, it's all okay. It's, it's um, I guess for all of us, especially the, the older older guys in the team. You, um, Tom, you've come in and really shown that you're committed, wealth and knowledge, and you're just there with a good heart trying to share and spread the love of the game. And that's all we mm. can ask for, right? So I oh, appreciate um, that. Is it is it a normal okay. thing in, in China to have coaches that are sort of younger than than players? Because in Australia, like I'd coached, yeah. I've it wasn't actually that unnormal for me because I've coached uh, teams where I've been the youngest. I, I've, I coached a, a team that I was not el- even eligible to play in yet because I wasn't old enough. Is that a normal thing to see uh, younger coaches coaching older teams in China or is it normally you have the older ones? Uh, I guess for I think- Shanghai, where I would coach the expats, generally uh, like I'll be younger. Well, originally I, was, I would be a bit younger than some of the uh, older expats, but uh, it was okay because I could demonstrate that I knew my stuff. 
I'm here to help them improve the game, uh, improve their game and get more out of it. And um, it hasn't really been too much of a problem as long as you can, you know, uh, communicate well, regardless of your age. Uh, Jordan, I don't know if it's the same for you um, and Bong or not. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm thinking it's a normal thing in China. So basically, most of the cases we uh, we have coaches like uh, uh, maybe much older than the players. So interesting thing is that I have been invited to coach a master team when I was like 28, 29. And then when I, when I got there, I just no one listened to me as a young kid. Mm. Like uh, they're like rugby players from Dongguan Bulldogs and Guangzhou Rams. They just want to have fun. So it must be tough for, 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 for the community here <laughs> at a development stage that people just, yeah, it's, it's not normal. Hmm. But to me, it's a norm. Everyone's younger than me. <laughs> Almost oh, <yeah>. everyone. <laughs> no. No. But, but you've, uh, you look so beautiful, so it doesn't really matter. No one asks. <laughs> You're probably oh, the I mean, youngest. Like, oh, well, I, I started to play like, like in a more senior age, like 33. So most of, most of the team, most of the teammates are much younger. Like, you know, a lot of stuff, especially when I play with the girls, right? Mulan. Everyone's is much younger, like, except for me and Echo are over 30s. And most of the most of the girls are still under 30. Age so just, it's a norm. Age is just a number. I think one of the Australian players is playing men's open. He's going to be 37 this year. Mm. And you could probably guess who that is. <laughs> uh, uh, but I think as when you as an older coach, uh, you don't necessarily have to say well, I, I taught some of the high school kids, right? So I don't I don't really have the top end speed to beat like get around the outside or hit a gap. But now I'm thinking of the next play and you know putting them out of position to score against him and just then talking to them like yes, you uh yeah, you could beat that gap. But as your game evolves, then you can think, what is the high percentage play here, right? So, mm. um, and they kind of pick up on those things so they become better players as well. So uh, as you get older, you you have more more tricks, right? So veteran moves, but how can you get the younger guys to really respect that and learn from that as well? Just even um, what I've found is when I'm, when I'm playing now socially, you, you're coming across like little young whippersnappers, 16, 17 year old. But as you get older, you, you work out where to position yourself to make it so from, from doing this to this, I have the least amount of ground to cover or it's yeah. the easiest, the easiest way to do this uh, because I understand where to position myself on the field. Work smarter, not harder, right? It's, it's exactly that. It's even a case mm -hmm. of like standing where if they want to try and step you and you're getting back on side, you stand next to them uh, rather than in front of them. And then they can just, because if you stand next to them, they can't step into you. <laughs> just little things, little things like that. It's um, the great thing with touch was like uh, your ex experience can go a long way, especially um, like the longevity of the game. Right. So as you talked about in the, the Aussie teams, like there are some older folks, but they're just so good. Regard, mm. they might have lost a little top in speed or may not have that same burst, but their positioning, their knowledge of the game means so much and working within the system um, mm. goes so far. And, and touch footy is great too. Like you look at uh, rugby and, and rugby 15s about like what's the average age for retirement there? It'd be about what, 33, 34? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, whereas touch football in the World Cup, there's an over 50s division. And in Australia, we've actually got an over sixties division. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we've got a women's women's over fifties is the oldest you go to in the women's women's over fifties, or you can do men's over sixties, and those are some of the most entertaining games you'll watch because there will be someone who would have held a grudge from thirty years ago, and it's time for payback in that game. <laughs> <laughs> There's some pretty oh, pretty cranky old blokes playing. <laughs> That'd be good to watch. Yeah, it's it's pretty classic sometimes. Um, yeah. So I mentioned about a, a, an Australian player, who, possibly knowing who that is. Um, do you guys have a favourite 
it doesn't have to be Australian. It can be anyone. Do you have a favorite sort of player or team that you watch online or you follow um, that, you, that you really like or your favorite, your favorite player, your favorite team, anything like that? Uh, John, you want to go first? I know your favorite um, player. My, my favorite player is Drummies from Crystal and Sharks. Yeah. Um, probably, probably the, yeah, been the Drummies probably been the most sorry? consistent. I reckon he's been the most consistent player over a long period of time. Yeah, I mean, um, he, he's he's very um, he he was just amazing. Like uh, uh, at this year's NTL, I I have had had a chance to do shadowing, coaching shadowing with uh, Kristen Shafts, and uh, I think in quite a few games, the, like uh, Drummies still like score four tries or five tries in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in a thirty minutes game, which is amazing that he he's now forty two years old. I mean, yeah, and, and we to play at that level for such a long time, you just I I I can hardly imagine yet. Yeah, so we have NTLs. NTLs is a national, so our regions yeah. come together. Well, it can it's changed a little bit as yeah. of recent, but this tournament runs once a year. And to put into perspective about um, the longevity of, of Drummy. Um, yeah. He, they put up a Facebook post. He has scored in men's open over 150, yeah. 150 tries as a middle. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I think the next closest is about 110. And I think that's a winner. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And also, yeah, the, the, the way he plays, like he, he's still doing steps and quickies at that explosive play. He's not like doing passings, doing setup moves. He's not doing that. He's still like a, yeah, and I like uh, yeah intensity Dylan, there. Dylan Hennessy was the one that popularized the long pass, and Drummy was the one that popularized yeah. the slide dive at your feet, those little cheap tries, yeah. and that's probably yeah. why yeah. Dylan, Dylan was probably more well known as a player is because the long passes look better yeah. on camera, they look better on the highlights. Whereas Drummy's <laughs> tries, if you if you had a collection of all Drummy's one hundred and fifty tries, they wouldn't be very entertaining because they all look the same. <laughs> It's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Cindy dive, quickie right. dive. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. points a point. Doesn't matter how you get it. What about you, uh, Alice? You got a, a favorite player? Do you do you follow much touch footy online as much as you can in China? Because I know there's a bit of restrictions on what you can and can't use. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't really have a particular player who like really look into. But one thing I do want to mention is like when I started to um learn touch, I follow some channels, especially for Hualo, you know, Jordan Pell put up a lot of videos um in the channels, the WeChat channels, so we can uh, really t- view still by today I like, still watch them. Like I'm not, not a big fan of Jordan himself, but <laughs> what he does. <laughs> and yeah, it's I'm like good really good. Um Dragon as well. Dragon as well. Dragon will put up some um videos uh on the Douyin, you know the the China social version media. of TikTok. So yeah, on social media, so we we can uh watch them. I just wish that we we could have more like games and techniques and videos. I I, I noticed that uh Jordan's would would want to do some video shootings uh for teaching as well for teaching purpose as well which is good like especially for starters we are eager for some learning material you know and a lot of people on the page we don't really have time to adapt you know using all your brain and thinking, talking about uh your physical abilities at, at that time it's not too much that yeah. you can adapt so when you do have a video to review and that would be amazing well, we'll see what we can do as far as filming goes next month when we're in China. I'll have the camera with me. It's just as long as we can find someone to actually film because uh, last time we were there, it was all sort of everyone was sort of involved some way. So there wasn't really anyone to film. But so if we can get someone to film perfect. And I just got this one. So Ooh. maybe wow. some uh, <laughs> some interviews or something like that around around the camp could be a bit fun. Yeah. Um, Ming, got a, a favorite team, uh, uh, team player. I, well, I always enjoyed watching the Dylan Hennessy highlights, right? Because legend, uh, I guess, in this current generation. 
Um, current player I, I really enjoy watching is uh, Maddie Sinclair uh, from the Touch Blacks. Um, mm -hmm. He's from the Loaded, Loaded Club um, in Auckland. So I got a chance to watch him play two uh, Pakatane Touch tournaments ago. And just the speed, the, uh, the sharpness, and the tenacity of the player of, of, of Maddie Sinclair, I thought it was quite quite admirable, a really cool cool to watch. And, um, you know, he performed well at the most recent uh, Trans-Tasman um, tournaments in the Men's Open. Unfortunate about some of the results, but, um, you know, he, he put it all out on the field and he signed well in Nationals, and et cetera. So uh, great player and definitely keen to go watch, uh, watch him play a bit more at the World Cup. Yeah, definitely. And he actually hasn't had a mention yet on, on these chats. So it's good to get some more sort of um, NZ players mentioned because mm -hmm. everyone seems to just, because I think um, Australian touch is probably more dominated on social media, especially YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, if you search touch football, it usually automatically comes up with Australian touch football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the because the club system and I well, the way I see it is that the club system in Australia gets to play a lot more high level uh, tournaments uh, and the season's longer. So you get to, you play a lot more in there. Whereas in New Zealand, like you, Whakatane is probably the best club tournament. Then you go into the nationals and you don't really, because of our seasons, you don't get to play as long as Australia. So there's not as much resources. Um, but from what I see that New Zealand is working on that. So hopefully we can get more out of there. And hopefully Tom, you can also do some more analysis on New Zealand as well. And you know the differences of how they play. Yeah. You talked about the differences in, like, say, or tactics or um, at least philosophies. Well, in a nutshell, I think New Zealand has the most exciting style to watch. I think if you're promoting touch football to the world, show them New Zealand highlights. It's not Australian. Austra Australians definitely probably more disciplined and uh, more um, simple. But that's just not always good for highlights. They might get your tries and might win your games, but the way New Zealand play with the the eyes up and keeping the ball alive and the late switch, very old. We we call that old school. It's just so much. It's so entertaining to watch. So um, I do probably mm. need I do probably need to watch more New Zealand games. But um, a lot of the times, because it's so um, off the cuff, it actually is quite yeah. difficult to analyze. Mm. Um, because it's just all in their heads of what they're doing. So, um, but yeah, I'll do yeah. my best to get some more NZ content out. Cool. And also that when you're talking about like watching videos, especially for new players, uh, I think at least until your second years of playing touch, you 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 know a little bit how to learn from the videos. <laughs> it's quite yeah. difficult for the first two years to really watch the videos and really learn from that. The only thing is, oh, the step's amazing. Oh, that long pass. Yes. But yeah. that game. <laughs> yeah, how did, you, how did you get that long pass? Because when I threw the long pass, the winger just made the touch. What's the difference? Well, um, anything else you want to want to talk about? Because um, it's actually getting quite late here. Yeah, it's been pretty late for you. But uh, yeah. first thing uh, for me, really, uh, thanks, Tom, for, I guess, all the help, everything for... Uh, trying to touch, um, no, not a problem at all. Is, um, making the effort to come up and uh, train, help us train and get us prepared for the World Cup. And looking, looking forward to looking forward to sharing the first beer after the tournament. Yes, that, that would be a, that would be a very very well refreshing one at that. And I'm really excited to come again. Um, and I'm really excited to show um, introduce you to to Mitch as well, the the senior yeah. mixed. Uh, coach Jordan Jordan has um has met Mitch because of uh, his time playing with the, the Dolphins in Australia. Yeah. Um the whole what half a game that you played, Jordan? Was it <laughs> half a game before you did your hamstring? I I played many games. Oh half a game, yes. Yeah, half a game on live stream, yeah. And Mitch just lost lost his voice. <laughs> yeah. Was he was he uh, yelling at you or I think he lost his voice because he he was coaching, and then so when uh, he was commentating, it's like we we can't hear, really hear what he said. But uh, yeah, Jordan, uh, he, he Jordan didn't actually hurt himself. He just knew that he was playing me the next day, and he's like, I don't want to, I don't want to play Tom. I'm just gonna oh injury. 
<laughs> but you had nothing to worry about because even with like nine players, they beat us still. I mean, Tom, well, I was a very, very tip, tricky right? player. Yeah. <laughs> there was me and Nick Grant going at each other the whole game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, well, uh, thanks very much for coming on. I was actually going to probably, I was thinking about doing a, a, a live version of this while I was in China, but just to keep it sort of consistent with the whole thing, I changed my yep. mind at the last minute. But um, yeah, so thanks for coming on um, short notice. Um, yeah, look at, looking forward to catching up with all of you guys well, in two weeks now. It's going to come pretty quickly. Yeah. 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 See you in a few weeks. Yeah. See and you then. also, you're coming during. Uh, Holiday and uh, festivals, the Dragon Ball Festival. Oh, sounds exciting! Yeah, it's a uh, Dragon Ball Festival. We'll get you some jongsas, um, so like some rice dumplings. They're quite good. I had my first Sticky dumpling rice. last last time I was in Ooh. China. I had a dumpling for the first time. I don't um, know how you get by life not having a dumpling beforehand. I know. I have no <laughs> idea how either because it was actually quite. It was quite nice. Terence that I was with, he. He had a, yeah. a full full plate of dumplings, and then we went to the barbecue. Yeah, and yeah. he ate and he ate more than anyone else at the barbecue. But for a little bloke, he eats a lot. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he eats a lot. Yeah, he, he needs the energy. He's running all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he's. <laughs> Righto, guys. Um, thanks again, uh, and we'll see you see you in a couple of weeks. Cheers. Thanks, Bye, guys. Yes. Take it easy. Cheers, guys. Good Bye. talk. Bye. Bye. Bye.